Welcome to Talent Hub Talk. I am Ben Duncan, and this is a place where prominent and inspirational figures from both the local ANZ and global Salesforce Ohana share their stories. This episode is sponsored by our friends at Flow Republic. Flow Republic is the elite Salesforce Academy, helping architects all over the world to realize their goal of becoming a Salesforce certified technical architect. The success that architects are having with Flow Republic is incredible. So if you are on your journey to CTA, then I highly recommend checking out flowrepublic.com to understand how they can help you. In today's episode, I am delighted to welcome back Emily McCowan, Salesforce CTA and Public Sector Solutions Lead. Since Emily was last on the show, she has successfully passed the CTA Review Board, so we unpick her journey from beginning to now. We look at the different roles Emily has held, why she has doubled down on working in the consulting space more recently, how her CTA journey took shape, and who has inspired her along the way. Emily talks candidly about CTA not being a race, what needs to align for anyone pursuing it, and how certain groups like Ladies Be Architects, Women in Tech, and Flow Republic helped her. Finally, Emily talks about what is important to her now and what she enjoys most about working on public sector projects. I really hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome back, Emily. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Good, good. Yeah, really, really happy to have you back on the show. We're going to cover a different topic today. Um, last time we were talking about the life of an architect and uh, and being a parent and an architect and kind of balancing that workload home and in the office. Today, we're really focusing on you as a, an individual and your journey and uh, achievements, which, uh, yeah, massive congrats on your recent achievement of uh, becoming a CTA. Thank you. Must have been uh, something you've you've been working towards for a long time, which we'll unpack today, and we'll uh, uncover how you felt the moment you found out as well. But let's look back at the very beginning. Um, I always start with um, kind of your journey into the Salesforce world, but before as well. So tell me a little bit about your career before you became a Salesforce professional. What your goals and aspirations were? Well, yes, um, I actually started in the tech world when I was a teenager. I was about fifteen or sixteen, and my mum was working um, was at Unitech in New Zealand. It's kind of like a TAFE. Uh, so she was in the like IT support division there and they needed some um, temps over the summer break. Um, she got me a job as one of them. I kind of got a taste of working in tech. I ended up working part-time as a help desk analyst. So I would sit on the front desk and I would help students and staff with their logins, just kind of basic help desk stuff. Um, I was pretty aimless as a teenager, definitely thought that tech was my affinity and that's where I might end up. Um, then in my final year of high school, I actually got quite unwell. I got glandular fever and was away for months. So I didn't actually graduate high school. Uh, I just took some time to get well again and, and worked full time. Um, and decided after a few years of working at this, um, in this tech job at Unitech that, I wanted to go and study at university and I thought I want to work in the business world um, and I want to be a project manager. That was kind of my my end goal. So how how did you go from, um, I guess, having that goal but not really, I, at that stage it seemed like you, did you know how to get there or like did you have a clear plan as to how you were going to become a project manager? I didn't really have a huge plan. I knew I, um, it was going to be easier to get where I wanted to go if I had a bachelor's degree. Plus, my dad was um, actually a, a professor at a university. There was a little bit of like an expectation that university was where I was going to go. Uh, so I thought, I'll get this degree and then I'm sure it will all just fall into place. Mm -hmm. So did did you end up going into the, the PM space after um, getting the degree or did is that when you kind of landed your, your way into the Salesforce world? It is when I got into the Salesforce world and I did end up as a project manager kind of along the way to becoming an architect where I am today. Um, so I graduated university and I was looking for full-time jobs and I picked up one called a database admin job and it turned out the database that I would be administering was Salesforce. So I was really an accidental admin. Um, I remember in my first week they gave me my sysadmin login to Salesforce and someone asked me to build a report. I was like, honestly, what Salesforce? I don't, I don't know. 
And so, because this is going back like before Trailhead, right? So where did you go? So when you're asked to build a report and you've, you, you don't even know what Salesforce is at that time, where did you go for support? So yeah, this is back in 2010, pre-Trailheads. I just sort of had a stab at it. Um, I didn't totally figure it out, but my employer did send me on um, the five-day admin training course that Salesforce does, which really helped um, to sort of, uh, I guess, demystify what this platform was and what I could and would be expected to do in my job. So um, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, th I think there were lots of in uh, accidental admins back at that point. It's becoming less common because I think Salesforce is becoming a career of choice right now, right? So many people are, are aiming for a career in the Salesforce ecosystem, m maybe less so falling into the Salesforce space these days. But when did you, when did you say to yourself, right, I've, I've found what I want to do. This is, I'm building a career in this space. Yeah, well, I'm, I consider myself really lucky that I, was kind of an accidental admin. I think it's much harder to get that kind of role now. Um, but it was actually on that five-day admin training course that I decided that this is the career I wanted to pursue. Um, as I saw how easy it was to configure software. Um, I have a couple of quite technical brothers. So one who at the time was studying software engineering, Another who was studying a master's in pure math, he liked to tinker with R and do statistics a bunch. So I, I was thinking to myself, oh yes, I'm going to be able to show my brothers that I can build software too. This is so exciting. Um, so yeah, it was really quite early on that I knew this was the the path I wanted to take. And a good decision. Yeah, I agree. So you you touched on the fact that you, you did um, find your way into the project management space. You, you've kind of held a few different roles, a few different titles, responsibilities over the years. You've been an admin, you've been a BA, project manager, product manager, um, and obviously architect. So did, because sometimes people feel like they, you know, they need to jump to architect straight away, or like there's that real rush to, to maybe follow a certain path. And that, that could be like admin, functional consultant, solution architect, or could be developer, technical lead, technical architect, but you've kind of performed a variety of roles, some that maybe weren't obvious in terms of um, that progression. So, you know, um, BA and, and product manager isn't always the way that people go when they want to be an architect. So how have you benefited from kind of delving and dipping into those different areas? I see people try to map out what a Salesforce um, career journey or what a pathway to these different jobs should look like. And I don't think anyone ever gets it totally right because I think it is um, a little bit random and you do kind of just move, sometimes you move sideways, sometimes you're moving towards a goal, sometimes you just get an opportunity to try something that seems interesting and later on down the track in hindsight you can see how that actually helped you get to where you were today. Um, so I, I think having a taste of all those different roles really kind of built quite a good uh, foundation for what is now my architect skill set. So as an admin and doing all the, you know, the hands-on configuration, got a lot of build experience of what it was really like to build and deploy um, and how projects worked from that aspect. As a BA, I got to spend heaps of time talking to stakeholders and figuring out how best to get the information I needed. So a lot of questioning, relationship building, figuring out how best to communicate professionally, um, documenting what I found out in a way that then it would be useful for the architects and the developers, um, kind of influencing as well as I got more knowledgeable about Salesforce, knowing when someone was asking me for something that was going to be a little bit crazy to build and the ability to say, that's a great idea, but how about this instead um, to hopefully influence the requirements to better suit what Salesforce can do. Then, yeah, time is project management. You get some of those leadership um, skills, some of the knowledge of how project commercials can work um, and how to see, I guess, and measure the health of a project. Have you ever been someone that would say, you know, that's not part of my remit, like that's not my role? No, and that's actually been kind of an interesting um thing that I've been thinking about recently because when you get to a more senior point in your career as well as a stage in your personal life where you have like a growing family um, 
doing everything and saying, yes, everything is not sustainable anymore. But prior to all of that, yes, I, I never said that wasn't my job, partly because I had the time and the energy, <laughs> but I also was really interested to learn. I was hungry to get a taste of everything so I could figure it out um, and figure out if it was for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I think um, obviously you, you seem to be someone that's thrown yourself in at new challenges and obviously it's um, it's kind of enabled you to to pick up different things and, and see new experiences and opportunity rather than just extra work. Yeah, yeah. So what about, because you've worked end customer, you've um, obviously you're in consulting now, you've worked for a product business. Like, have you have you taken little bits from each of those on the journey and um, and made the most of, of the experience um, and taken that towards getting towards the goal of CTA? Yeah, I think it was definitely helpful getting a start in the customer side. I have a lot of empathy for what it's like to be a customer company that has a Salesforce org and Maybe sometimes it's hard to find the resources or get budget to have the kind of resources you really would like to make the most of your implementation. So then trying to balance working with partners and, you know, uh, managing their ongoing relationship, uh, that's that's important to, to know from their side. Now, when I'm in the consulting side and I'm trying to um, help sell our services to customers, I know somewhat of what they're looking for and what they're going to need from us. I had time at a uh, ISV at a um, app exchange product that integrates with Salesforce. And that was really interesting because I got to see kind of a different side of um, implementation where I was continually implementing the same thing over and over again. And it was kind of part consulting and part um, product development. So that was uh, really interesting to know as well, kind of the long-term view of what a solution might look like for an org. And obviously working in consulting itself, consulting or contracting, depending on how you want to approach it, nothing really compares to the variety um, of use cases and products that you get to work with and the other people that you get to work with and learn from who have seen such a broad range compared to what you might see and kind of the narrower view that a customer or an ISV might have. So I guess you, you, my next question was going to be around like the strategic um, move, or was it a strategic move for you over the last three or so years to go back into that consulting world and really kind of focus on being a consultant, not in the, the job title terms, but like being in that world of going into customers and understanding their problems and solving those problems for various different companies. Was that like a strategic move for you because you wanted to be a CTA? It definitely was um, because of, like I said, the breadth of experience and use cases you see. Also the access to CTAs who can mentor you and the understanding of a business that is aligned with that goal. They want you to become a CTA too because it's valuable for the, the consulting firm that you work for. So they give you like an extra level of support from, from what I've seen mm -hmm. compared to maybe a customer who doesn't understand the value not always, but sometimes that's the case. Yeah, I try to explain that quite often to people when they, they tell me that their goal is to be a CTA and that their expectation is that their customer or their, their employer pays for it. And I do say, you know, it's not always that, that, that. Like I've had this challenge by people in the past who it is becoming more valued by customers, but not you have to understand that not every customer will understand even what the CTA is. Absolutely. Um, you know, so it's that's more of a battle. Whereas a partner, they obviously, you know, they 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 need CTAs. They want CTAs. It's 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 probably a, a goal of most partners to have a CTA within their business. So it's an easier discussion to have around support from both hours, monetary, all of those things. If you're talking to a partner, yeah, I think that easier is the the key word. That it's not to say that customers can't understand, and some of them do, but it's just a bit easier. Mm -hmm. So tell me, uh, tell me through your journey um, to CTA, kind of start to finish, and um, and what have you learned about yourself through the the journey? Yeah, I um, so I mapped out a little bit of a timeline because I was reflecting a bit on it. Uh, I think it was so 2010. I started in the Salesforce world. About 2015, I'd seen that there was this idea of like a, a solution or a technical architect as a job. And by 2015, I decided I had the experiences to say, I want to do this. Can I do this? But I knew what a CTA was and I knew at that point that I would never be technical enough. So that was my, my kind of, um, 
self-talk. I'll never be a CTA. I'm not technical enough. Maybe I can be an architect. Um, fast forward a couple of years, I've got a bit more experience and I knew at that point that I was capable of being an architect. Uh, I think it was around 2016, 2017 that I was awarded MVP uh, for the work that I was doing in the community um, with Salesforce. And so one of the, uh, the things you get with that is access to more Salesforce training and certifications. So I thought I'm going to prove my architect kind of credentials by pursuing the certifications and the pyramids. But I still know, like, I might get the prerequisite. I'll still never be technical enough to be a CTA. Um, in 2019, so fast forward another couple of years, I joined um, Deloitte and I got to know Paul Fail, who is a CTA there based in Melbourne. Um, such a lovely guy and a real kind of turning point in my journey was a conversation or a couple of conversations that I had with him where he succeeded in convincing me that I um, could and should uh, be a CTA, that if I could put enough effort into it, um, that this is something that I could learn, that I already had all of the business side skills, the soft skills, um, as they're called, that actually can be quite hard to pick up. But at, the, at that time I was, I was pregnant. So he said, you'd better go for it now before you have a baby. It was my first kid. So I had no idea what I was getting myself into. He's like, it's going to be a while after you have a kid before you can try again. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, okay. Um, so I had a go. I had an attempt in March, 2020. I failed. I passed one section. I was thinking, I was like, that's, that's pretty good that I passed one section. Having taken the board, I realized just how like kind of naive my level of understanding of what they were looking for in the exam was. Um, so had my baby, had maternity leave, um, and I came back to work about a year later in 2021. So after having a bit of a break, I had thought about it and thought, yeah, I'm going to try again. I'll pick up CTA study again, but I still wasn't sleeping much. My daughter has never been that good of a sleeper. Um, work was really busy as well. So there was not um, everything kind of in alignment uh, throughout my life. I wasn't, I wanted to be ready. I wasn't ready. So I had to kind of spin my wheels for a bit. I would attempt studying. Um, we would all get sick again from some daycare bug and it would all go out the window. Um, and in 2022, I changed employers, um, got a little bit of a different kind of balance of project work and study and a, a bit more support um, from the team by sending me on the Flow Republic CTA course, which I thought was really valuable. Um, so yeah, I really started to make progress. I took the 602 and passed that. And then in December of last year, I had my second attempt at the board and passed. Congratulations. And you're not the first person on the podcast that's mentioned Paul, uh, and I'm sure there's other pools out there in terms of, you know, how having that that person that kind of said you know you're you can do this um but there must be so many people out there that don't have that person like what did that mean to you to have Paul tell you that you know you you've got this you can do it yeah it was a massive boost um Paul is an incredibly knowledgeable like long time CTA he's really good at his job and for someone who I respected so much professionally to um say categorically that he had that level of belief and faith in me was that kind of boost that I wasn't able to give to myself. And I was able to turn that I'm not technical enough into I'm not technical enough yet and kind of give me that spark, that kick that I needed um, to start going for it. And and then when you when you do achieve the goal, it must be like such a, a rewarding feeling to pick up the phone and to to say, you know, thank you ultimately you you helped me yeah he was like the uh the third person i told husband first obviously because his sacrifices um towards the the kind of collective journey to cta were great um and then my current employer and then yeah i called paul it was great i was absolutely buzzing that day it took a long time to to come down from that and to to go to sleep that night I can imagine. Yeah, I always like to ask that. Like, what was the 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 emotion? What was the overriding feeling when you? Because it's an email, right? I think you you get an email that that tells you. So I was actually on a call with one of my colleagues on a video call, um, 
at home and he'd asked at the start of the call, oh, have you got your results yet? Because everyone that I worked with was keen to know. Um, this was bang on the two week mark. So I was like, it has to be today, right? Oh, all the Americans have gone to bed by now. Maybe I won't find out until tomorrow. Um, so we'd finished up our call and just before I hung up, I opened my email to have another look and it had popped up. I saw, and sort of in Gmail, you can see a preview of the first sentence and it said, dear Emily, congratulations. And so I opened it and just sort of started hyperventilating and screaming. <laughs> and then I like run out, Eric, Eric, and get my husband's attention. So I, I guess technically the guy on the call knew before my husband did. He was just kind of watching this all unfold, but yeah, it was um, extremely exciting and it really felt like I'd, it wasn't just me that had put the work into this and it's like I had done it for my husband, for my daughter, for my colleagues who had all helped me along the way. Um, I just felt so proud to be able to say that I had kind of upheld my side of the bargain and that their efforts had been worth it, that we mm -hmm. got the reward. Yeah, 100%. Do you feel it's important for people listening that maybe are on their journey to understand that it isn't a race, like it doesn't have to be done in a certain order, you know, it doesn't have to be achieved within a certain amount of time, life gets in the way, um, you know, family, um, family uh, goals and aspirations are also important? Yeah, I definitely do. I tried to get that CTA attempt in before I had my baby and... I mean, it was, it was great to get the experience of seeing what the exam was like because I learned something from it. Um, but I don't know, like in hindsight, I was never going to pass that. And so I was lucky enough that my employer at the time paid for that attempt. If someone was paying for that out of their own pocket, like you don't want to go for it unless you really know. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many things that have to align. Now, like everyone's life is so different and the stage of your life that you're at and the stage of your career can be a little bit different when you're attempting the CTA. But I, um, I think there's three main kind of pillars that you have to have there in a relatively solid place. You have to have work, um, supporting you in some way or another, whether that's making sure that they, uh, understand what the demands of the CTA journey are like. Maybe they're supporting you to go on training courses like I was lucky enough to have, or just at least not putting you on some project where you're going to be working like 70 hours a week and never having enough headspace to do the study mm -hmm. you need to do. Uh, family needs to be aligned. I think it like depends on the family. Everyone's family is different. I'd be surprised if anyone with like a young baby or <laughs> some is passing, particularly, you know, the person that's been carrying the baby. Uh, we know what those newborn months are like, particularly. And yeah, if you've got a kid that doesn't sleep well like mine, you probably want to wait until you're sleeping more because sleep is so important for your brain to be able to, to learn and grow. Um, and otherwise health as well. Like, um, if you're battling with some chronic issues or not just even you, but people in your family or people around you are suffering poor health. That can take a lot of your energy away because you're maybe caring for yourself. You're caring for other people. Um, CTA is an awesome goal and I have learned heaps on my journey. Honestly, passing it, like the day before I passed the exam and the day after I passed the exam, there wasn't a massive difference in who I was. So I'd already learned and like kind of reaped most of the benefits from the journey already before I got the pass. Um, so, you know, that, that growth is good and I encourage people to do it, but I also encourage people not to see it as something that should be prioritized over your health, over your family, over your work. I think it should be try and find a balance. And for sure, in the last few months before I set my exam, things were a little out of balance. My husband was doing the majority of the care of our daughter, um, and so, you know, it was great to have Christmas break straight after my exam so I could spend lots of one-on-one -on -one time with her again. But, um, yeah, don't, don't push yourself to go when, when the stars aren't kind of aligning for you yet, because mm -hmm. you might, you might burn out on it. You might struggle more than you need to. 
yeah I, I completely get that like I think um yeah I've my my daughter's one now and I'm I'm barely even able to tie my own light, uh, shoelaces at the moment and find time to do that let alone study I think um I don't know how anyone would find time with with a young child and um yeah it's it's such a you know a major commitment the CTA it's um yeah so fair play to to you and your family for being able to fit that in and obviously get the achievement and obviously it's all worth it now right but uh, it's a big sacrifice at the time yeah, definitely. There were lots of times that I questioned whether it was worth it. There were times that my husband and I had a few chats. He was always really supportive, like, whatever you want to do, I think you should go for it. You can do this. But um, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm, for sure. Now, you, you have been heavily involved in the ecosystem. Um, you know, you like you said, you were awarded the MVP previously because of the work that you've done in the ecosystem. And you've been involved in um, certain initiatives, both from, you know, helping run them, but also utilizing them, I guess, for, for your journey to CTA. So we're talking things like obviously Flow Republic, you, you've mentioned for um, your journey to CTA, but then there's um, Ladies Be Architects, there's Women in Tech, there's a number of other initi initiatives. But bringing those all together, did they all help you achieve this goal? Yeah, definitely. So I, I helped to start the Women in Tech group in Brisbane and got really involved in that space kind of earlier on in my career, um, mostly because I found seeing other women in the tech world and in the Salesforce world achieving great things was really inspiring for me. And I wanted to kind of share that with other people. And then I heard about Ladies Be Architects, um, who was Jason Lawrence put me onto that group. Gemma had started them in 2017 and I used some of the Ladies Be Architects resources for my study towards the um, architect sets on the pyramids. Uh, I ended up connecting with Gemma and um, joining as a first an ambassador and now a co-leader. And I really found that by kind of getting involved in creating content for Ladies Be Architects, that it was a really great way for me to learn because I had to teach others. That meant I really wanted to know that what I was saying was not like totally wrong. Mm -hmm. So I would pay a lot more attention to my study and really try and learn something inside and out before I would lead a study session, uh, which still serves me today. Still, still doing ladies be architect sessions. It's really, really rewarding seeing all the other people. You know, sometimes we get messages from people to tell us that they found our resources useful, that they've been inspired to pursue the architect journey because of what we're doing, um, which is awesome. Like, I love that. And with uh, with Flow Republic, so one of the things I'd found with my study before I got into Flow Republic was that I was kind of lacking the structure and the, the how deep do you go when you're studying these things? Because you could really spin your wheels learning um, to absolute depths of detail about how different features work but the problem is that the um, platform is vast and it keeps growing and you would probably find that you would never catch up and be totally ready to take the exam if you were approaching it that way um so flow republic helped to give me that kind of structure and guidance of what level do i need to be focusing to and the other thing is they give you pretty um, incisive feedback when you do mocks so Seb and Johan, they're, they're not brutal, but when they're coaching you, they're not your friends. They're trying to prepare you for the exam and what it's really like. Um, and I had CTAs and coaches do mocks with me for my first attempt, um, but they were all a bit too friendly. <laughs> they knew me and they supported me, so I didn't get as much of the kind of constructive criticism that I needed. The Flow Republic really helped with that yeah i can imagine uh, they're great guys but i can imagine you know they want the best for you but they also it's uh, it, there's an outcome they're looking to achieve right they're not just trying to be your friend they're trying to help you achieve that outcome that's right yeah so you're focusing um your public sector lead for maverick your current um organization uh, what do you enjoy about working in that space because we've really seen obviously the public sector boom um from a salesforce perspective over over the last few years um and um and yeah it must be very different working in that space compared to you know just working for a, a private organization because of the kind of work you're doing so what do you enjoy about that yeah um it's really had a massive growth in the last few years and it is really interesting um everyone's impacted by public sector organizations and i think it's really important to have all of the services and all of the information that these 
kind of agencies and organizations provide to people. There's this kind of view, or there was this view, it's, it's obviously changing now that, uh, you know, digital transformation is what's happening in the B2C space. So retail, um, things like that. I, I expect all the places that I shop to have an online presence. I expect it to be seamless, um, really easy to handle returns and that kind of thing. But what about access to all the information that I need um, from my city council or from my state governments? People expect that now to be similar kind of level of service. They want it to be digital. They want it to be transparent. They don't want to be waiting around for ages to hear outcomes. So they want it to be efficient and they want it to be accurate. They want people to get it right um, with the most up-to-date information. They want to have access to that for themselves and kind of self-serve wherever they can. Um, and that goes across, you know, all levels of government, um, from, you know, the, the city council up the road to the federal government, um, that's controlling the whole nation. Yeah. I find it really interesting when I find myself on a, a website or some sort of portal and I know I'm on Salesforce, it's kind of like the, the I'm like telling my wife and she's got no interest whatsoever. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. this is, it's like really, uh, it's funny. Yeah. I'm the same. I always get really excited when I see. Oh, I can tell this is run on Salesforce and this yeah. is how. <laughs> so you did mention that the day before the CTA result and the day after were pretty similar. You were the same person, you know, you'd achieved um, a lot of what you were looking to achieve on the journey. The result was just obviously a great outcome, but wasn't necessarily everything. Um, but yeah. what's important to you now, like you are a CTA, what's important to you about, you know, the ecosystem, the, the, the way that you're, um, you are in the, the ecosystem, I guess your, your role that you can play in the broader ecosystem. Yeah. Um, I don't want to rest on my laurels. You have to keep learning. So I'm continuing to learn. There's still things that I don't know a whole lot about. That I'm, um, curious to kind of dive into in more detail. It's also about sharing my knowledge with other people. I got a lot of inspiration and like mentorship and help from CTAs or from people who are on the same journey as me. So I want to like pay that forward, um, to help other people. So, you know, I've got a few people that I'm mentoring and hopefully they'll be announcing successful CTA passes soon as well. Um, particularly I want to inspire young women who are self-doubting and thinking that that's not for them. I want them to realize that, I mean, so most of us who are already in the tech world, we can learn any of it if we want to. It just takes the, um, like I said, the pillars, the kind of your life to be in the right space for you to have the capacity for it and the dedication to keep working at it. I also want to make sure that my life is well-rounded. So like I said, it got a bit out of balance in the last half of last year. So I have been taking a little bit of a step back to make sure that I'm spending enough time with my family. And just on enjoying stuff, the other day I went and bought some roller skates. I've been learning to skate again in the park nearby. Um, and oh, the kids, like, you know, I'm surrounded by toddlers because um, that's the age group that my daughter's playing with. And they're all wide-eyed and watching me kind of wobble along. Um, but it's great fun. So, yeah, just having a bit more fun. I think yeah, that's important. amazing. And you, you've deserved that, right, in terms of the, the um, sacrifices you make to get to this point. Like now is about um, enjoying that, but also giving back and, and being that person, I guess, that Paul was to you. I hope so. If I can be that person for someone one day, that would be uh, amazing, really rewarding to do. For sure. Well, thank you so much for, for being a guest again and uh, covering a few different topics this time. But yeah, thank you and, and well done. Congratulations again. And uh, thanks for all the work you do inspiring others. Um, and for anyone listening that does want to pick your brains again, is I think LinkedIn still the best place? LinkedIn, definitely. You can find me there. Um, I'm on Twitter, but not so much these days. But you can look me up at Hey Emily Hey. I might drop the links in the post that you put on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Well, thanks again. Absolute pleasure to have you back. Thanks, Ben. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the chat. And if you did, please make sure you have subscribed for future episodes that are coming through. I would also be very grateful if you would consider leaving a review on your chosen podcast platform, as five-star reviews will help us to reach more trailblazers from across the world. I look forward to sharing another episode with you soon. And thanks again.